Welcome back to the Mind Crack server. Sway a righteous reckoning. The slimy, green, icky denizens of the underworld will not soon forget. We're here at Shree's, and it is time for justice. Hey -oh. <laughs> and I have been here a little while, actually, and I actually wish I had of, uh been recording when I first got here because there were so many slimes in here. There goes my sword. That's my sharpness sword. And now we're on... Oh god, I may actually die. Okay, let me leave, leave that one alone for a second. And let's get some health back. We're actually in a dangerous situation. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. So, um... We're gonna be working a little bit more on the reed farm. My goal for the next day or two is to get all the farms functional to where I can harvest them. Uh, the I don't really need to do that for the melon side of the gourd farm. Pumpkins are functional. I harvest those. I've done several harvests. Uh, the wheat, only, I only have to do a little bit, not much. That won't take me long. So today I want to get the reeds functional. And to do that we need more pistons and more slime balls. So we are here at Shree's place. I actually, I went by Etho's place first, because I remember Shree saying that his uh, slime ball factory, it was out of, out of, uh, out of order. And I, I guess he's um, slowly adding new levels here. This is a new level. This was not here last time I was here. So that you can uh, spawn more in. So I've just been here killing stuff. There goes my second diamond sword, and what I have left is my only looting three sword which I uh, is kind of important I use it to harvest all my food but I, I've got a decent amount of food but I will need to there's somebody up there I will need to make more soon uh, but I've just been here killing slime balls or killing slimes for their slime balls I've have gone down there once or twice it's a little difficult to get it back up it's a tricky uh, ender ball shot so there's I just heard somebody up there let's go see if we can find him where are you at I just heard you and um, I guess once we're done here I just heard you buddy where you at did you fall down there no that's just a one there you are how about the day? how about the death from above I couldn't, I didn't have enough time to pick my battle cry in that jump. I was a little indecisive there. And then nothing but like goop came out of my mouth. So I'm gonna need a, a new looting sword pretty darn soon. I will probably hang out here till it breaks. All right, real briefly, let's, uh, let's look at a few things in creative mode in my testing range map. People keep sending me more efficient ways to uh, power the pistons for the reed farm. Which is awesome, I just wish you guys had sent me that stuff at the beginning. So here's one that somebody sent me. It's very compact, you'll notice there's no sandstone with redstone wire on top of the blocks here. Like we did um, over here, where we needed the uh, redstone on top of the block to power the, the upper level of pistons. Here you don't need it. And this is what it looks like um, in between the pistons there. Uh, somebody said that Nebris had used this, and that's where they learned it, I think. And that's a nice design. It takes a lot of repeaters, but it's compact, which for me is honestly more important than using a lot of resources. I'm kind of used to things taking a lot of resources. I like that. It's also for a really long chain like my, my farm is going to have. That like zipper look is gonna be cool. Um, but somebody sent me this one, which is even better. So check this one out. This one is so resource uh, efficient, it's amazing. The only redstone is this, no repeaters. And basically it what it is, is a bunch of block update uh, switches. So we got a fence under here, and when you power the fence it updates these pistons here to the either side and this redstone wire here powers this block which powers these pistons so those fences are 
uh, updating the pistons on either side. They're not actually powering the pistons. Um, so we got a bunch of uh, block update switches there. That's fun. And I think I'm going to use this. Um, people, I think originally I got sent this on Twitter and then someone posted on Reddit and someone else sent it to me. I've had like a dozen different uh, things sent to me for the uh, redesign. So here's the problem though. With this design, if you put a repeater on there to extend the line, because mine is going to need repeaters to extend the line because it's so long, uh, it doesn't work. Uh, because um, the, that block isn't getting powered because the repeater's in the way, more or less. But uh, there's an easy workaround for that. So if you imagine in my farm, we've got the next level that jumps up a block like that, and then pistons there and there, for instance. Um, no biggie. We can just do something. We're going to need power there. We can just do something like this. Let's see. I, I haven't actually done this yet, so let's just figure it out. Um, actually, maybe we don't need this. Put a repeater. No, not a piston. Repeater here. That there. And then we want to cut off the power. We don't want it to circle around. But, uh... The redstone is going to power this repeater into that block, which is going to turn on that wire. And allow this guy to fire. Like so. Um, and that should work. And what happens if you do that is the power won't turn off. Because it creates a circle there. So we need to cut it off. Nope. Come on. We need to cut it off right there so that it can't come back down. So we turn the power off, it turns off. Okay, whatever, back to the lens. All right, here we are back in uh, my neck of the woods. Um, while we're down here, I was sent a video, or, or rather I found a video in Doc M's uh, Twitter feed that was intended for me uh, about a new log out of Vader. The login server's broken again, I don't have my skin. We ended up with almost 14 stacks of Sticky pistons, that should last me... Uh, let's see, I have stone in one of these that I want the experience from. There we go. I'm trying to get up to 30 so I can enchant my, this pick here that barely has any use on it. It's really frustrating to try to uh, enchant level 28 now because it gives you like 30 and then 10 and then 6. It's really hard. Uh, I've never seen uh, a 28. Anyway, so here's the alternate log out of design somebody sent. Um, it works the same way as the hatch and the pistons. You stand here to where you can't see what's going on on either side. Unfortunately, uh, there must still be some difference between single player and multiplayer. As you can see, it don't work. Come on. There we go. Yeah, it doesn't work, unfortunately. It uh, it drops you down just like the other alternate log out of Vader uh, designs did. Doesn't work. So, um, we had all thought that they had unified the code for single player and multiplayer and that they were now the same. Apparently they're not. This does not work in multiplayer. Uh, nor does the other stuff. Let's go take this up to the lens. And I... I, I, I'm going to eventually add in a ender pearl elevator where you throw it straight up. I saw a, a design that I liked quite a bit in Doc M's uh, world tour, the last episode, I think, 111, where you go straight up and then you trigger, you when you hit the, uh, the peak of your jump, you hit some uh, trip wires which power pistons to push beneath you and create a floor. So um, you can go straight up, and I'm going to do something like that, and it's going to have multiple floors so that I can go down from the mines um, to ground. Whoa, God, whoops. <laughs> Don't look around while you're climbing a ladder, dummy. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do something like that so you can get from the mines all the way up here. The only problem is I don't know where I want to put it. I thought about, uh, I can't, don't fall off the ladder, putting it right there. Um, out on this pad. Here, I'll explain it a little bit when I get up here. Um, I, I still haven't decided if I want to put a farm up here or if this is going to be like the uh, the entry point to the lens. 
and hopefully I can eventually figure out how to connect portals up. That may be another thing that doesn't work in multiplayer and works in single player because I haven't been able to get that to work either. Every time I, uh, for instance, if I make a portal here with no other portals in the area, um, go to the nether and then try to come back, it generates a portal down there somewhere. And there's, there's like a few broken portals down here that I've, um, and it, it spits me out right at the same place every time. So I don't think that works in multiplayer either. I'm going to keep experimenting with it. But uh, the basic idea is there would be, um, if I make a an ender pearl elevator, uh, you wouldn't come up right here. But let's just say theoretically you come up here, right? So this is your entry point to the lens. And from here you can sort of get an overall view of the thing as you approach it, which might be kind of cool. Um, this platform obviously wouldn't be here. It would look different. I like the idea of being able to see it as you approach it. Another idea is to use one of these diagonals. Um, part of the re problem with uh, approaching it from this angle is that the path you're walking on blocks all of this because you're at the top of the lens. So what if you start maybe down in the middle section so that you can get a pretty good overall view of the lens. There would still be a little bit beneath you that would be blocked by this path. Um, something like that. I'm thinking about it. Haven't decided. But anyway, uh, what are we doing today? Today, we're going to continue some construction on the uh, the farm out here we've been working on. First, we got to put away some supplies. So let me organize and I'll be right back. All right, everything is set. I have all the resources I'm gonna need. And before I start building again, I got a bone to pick. <laughs> um, I don't know what it is. I just feel like starting shit <laughs> recently. Um, I, I'm recording this on the same day I recorded last episode where I started beef with beef. <laughs> so I still don't have a response from him. I don't know what he's how he's gonna react to that. Um, but. I got I gotta start start beef quote unquote with somebody else. So uh, um, I was watching Ethos latest video and Ethos uh, made it plain he has it hidden the fact that he learned some editing tricks from watching my videos, uh, particularly making montages and uh, cutting out boring parts like when you're harvesting a lot of stuff, uh, simple things like that that he took from me and he's uh, I think. How did he phrase it? Something to the effect of, yeah, he wanted to steal that technique or whatever. Which is fine. Which is fine. No biggie. Um, I mean, I certainly steal techniques from other people that when I see them and I like them. And I certainly learn a lot from watching other people play. That's something that's great about Minecraft in general and Minecraft in specific. But, uh, very recently, I started making montages with 200% speed and chipmunk, chipmunk voices. And guess what? <laughs> Last episode Etho puts out, he's got a montage with 200% speed and chipmunk voices. So I'm throwing down the gauntlet here, and I'm going to initiate a montage battle. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So <laughs> instead of just uh, staying static and resting on my laurels, we got to keep innovating, man. And this is going to be a way, it's going to challenge me and him to uh, keep coming up with new ways to uh, to film building and to put it together in editing. So, so there it is, Etho. I'm calling you out. Um, <laughs> so I guess it's, let's get this, let's get this party started. <laughs> Sayonara, sucker! <laughs> no, give him, give Hey, oh! Come get some, zombie! Hey, 
Hey -o. No, 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 Everything is done. At least everything we're gonna do today. The sun is rising. Um, the wiring is not finished. I am totally out of sandstone. This is all the sandstone I have left, so I'm gonna have to do more farming. Um, but, oh look, we're missing one there. But mostly they've all totally grown. I just wanted to get an idea of what a harvest might be like. The wiring is not finished either. Uh, because I ran out of sandstone, so there's actually four separate levers we have to switch. It's not automated at all, but uh, good enough to make it functional so I can start trading with villagers. So let's see what kind of harvest we get. Oh, um, let's check out, see if any of these uh, leaf areas are... Mm, look at these little leaf bridges. I'm wondering if those might get in the way. Let's look over here. Yeah, that one's going to be in the way. And that one too. Okay, so a little editing, and then we'll trigger it. Break that. There's one down there we need to fix. And this right here. And a few might get caught on here, but that's, that's not really important. We're going to get the bulk of it, which is what's important. Break this little guy. Oh, so long, Doc. Um, let's see. Want to remove that? I think this. Yeah, we should remove this as well. And that's good enough. And what about over here? Yep, here too. Okay, that should. Be enough. What else did I have to do? There's one right there. Okay. All right. So let's go back up top. We can trigger it. Uh, see what our harvest is going to be like. And um, it's definitely. I've made a. I've made a few decisions about the overall uh, construction of the lens. Um, I decided to make this collection tray different than this one. How this one comes to the center and collects down like this. I decided to have this one collect from the back and come down like here just so I could make a, a slightly different uh, aqueduct system. Uh, but what happened is because it's so much longer, it comes down much farther. It goes all the way down to there, um, much further than that. And so it's going to affect the overall shape of the lens. I've decided that the lens is indeed going to be asymmetrical. Um, out there, we are going to put the entrance and no farms on that side. So, I think next time I work on the lens, which is probably not going to be next video. I don't know what I'll do next video. I definitely need to 
farm some materials for a little bit. But next time I work on the lens, we're going to put in a uh, an ender elevator to get up here. And maybe we'll try to, uh, to uh, connect the portal up again. That may not be possible in multiplayer. I'll test it in single player and multiplayer, see what happens. All right, here we go. There's that one. And we need to come over to this side. Not as dramatic as it could have been with only having to hit one button, but uh, we'll get there. This is mostly a test. Let's see if I can hit the uh, the right platform. I missed it. Oh, no. Damn it. Damn it. Oh, I just mistimed that. I thought I, I, thought I might be able to uh, time that correctly. All right, give me a second. I'll be right back. All right, let's. Uh, I gotta hurry up and harvest the rest of it before they start to despawn down below. Only have five minutes total. <laughs> There's that one. Very nice. Uh, let's see. To get to the other side, what's the best way? Maybe up through here, and then down here. Yeah, that'll work. Um. There we go. Kerplak. And I haven't set up the ice yet either. There's a lot left to do, still. Um, but I think the overall progress is pretty good. Now we need to be down there. Hey oh! And here it all comes. So this will eventually collect faster. Still have to figure out what to do here. I would like to have it all collect into a central area. So we'll have to work on that another time. But here comes all of the the reeds. And as soon as we're done counting how much we get, I'm going to go look at it from below and talk about a few of the overall things I'd like to do in the future. <laughs> Man, this thing got big. And one thing you may notice is that we have a lot of space in here available. A lot of real estate. Haven't added the cactus yet. But what I'm thinking is that we, can add, we could probably fit a few other farms in here. Without too much difficulty, the only real difficult part is uh, getting the water to work. So I'm thinking uh, carrots and uh, what's the other one? Potatoes. We'll put those in here too, along with the cactus. And maybe we'll start working on the tree farm. We sort of uh, once I get down below, I'll, I'll talk about uh, the overall shape. But, um, anyway, I'm I'm sort of I'm pretty pleased with the uh, the overall progression. I'm glad that it's not like symmetrical, and I I'm continuing to discover new things. Is that everything? So what do we get? Ten stacks. Ten, a little bit over ten stacks. I guess that's. I don't see anything else. All right, so we had ten stacks. That's pretty good. Pretty good harvest for uh, something that's going to be automated in the in the future. I could have made it bigger. Um, I could have made a bigger automated one too, but um, the one, the one source block limitation is um, driving a lot of the uh, the design decisions here. Okay, so let's uh, let's pop down here and look at the lens from below. Am I gonna hit that tree? Oh, I just missed it. Yeah, clouds in the way, of course. So we've got this big rectangle here. And it's starting to look, the, the different farms are, well, don't fall off, are rather monolithic, I would say. Uh, this is not, but there's nothing underneath this yet. There will be. Um, but what I think I'd like to do is start to have like a half moon look. And then we're going to have a long walkway, maybe all the way out to here. I'm going to have to think about it. But a long walkway and then an entrance. So that as you walk towards the lens, you can see it as you approach. You get this big grand view of it. Um, and then, So we're going to put the uh, the ender elevator, something like this. And I'm going to have to work on that uh, another time. Figure out exactly where it needs to go. But that's sort of my idea. Because this one ended up sticking out farther, it sort of it's giving a, an oval appearance. I also think that um, in the end, this bottom cylinder here probably needs to come down a little bit more. 
to distinguish the central cylinders from the exterior farms, but um, there's a lot of like framework we've just added, but there's not much in the way of refined details. There's going to be, uh, we're going to revise the walk uh, walkway system, uh, the paths and the stairs, and there's going to be details on the bottom here. Uh, we may add some sort of struts or arches or something to support these things so that they don't look quite like they're floating, but still... Whoa, God! <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> so they still look like they're detached. And my poor feather falling four boots are about to break. I'm gonna have to make some new ones. Let's get back up. Cows, man, noisy. Oh. Okay, good. I can get out of this one. All right. So, um, <laughs> yeah, the the lens is getting big, and now we have a working reed farm. So uh, I'm probably gonna start trading as well. Start hoarding up those emeralds. All right, so hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I'll see you later. I'll take it easy. I'll have a good day, and I hope you do too. Bye-bye. Say bye, cows. Say moo. That's a good cow.